Sometimes going into movies without watching a trailer could be really good or really bad. This one, pretty good choice actually. Chase Liaki here with the Blue Futon reviewing Knox Goes Away, which is about pretty simple premise. Michael Keaton is a hitman and he kills people because, duh, that's what hitmen do. Anyway, a very, very bad case of dementia. I think it's called LCS or LCJ, but it's basically like dementia to the fucking 15th degree where you have weeks before your brain just goes away. However, he's detached from his family, but one of them comes in his life because something sinister happened, and now he's got to figure out to get his family in a safe zone before his dementia really, really kicks in. So do you like this film? I really did, actually. This is a solid, well-crafted movie directed by Michael Keaton. You have Hung Chow in this. You have James Marsden in it. You have Al Pacino in this. And like I said, with Michael Keaton directing it, he also stars in it. And it is not an action movie. So I think that's what helps me because I'm curious what the trailer shows if it's going to say it's an action movie or not. Like I said before, it's more of a thriller, murder mystery on how this guy is going to get through his day-to-day -day life with his dementia really kicking in. The acting is really solid overall. The look of the movie, yes, it is very simplistic. There is nothing too stylish about this movie, but this movie really didn't need to be stylish. It needed to tell a story about family, about how are you going to mend your past with very little time you have left. And I really enjoyed that aspect of this movie. Uh, have you seen it before? Sure, you've seen this dementia style of story, and you've also seen this cop style of story. You've seen the family elements of like the shittiness in the style of story. Absolutely. But it does what it's supposed to do, and it does it right. And when it comes to dementia and stuff like this, it really tugged on my heartstrings a little more than other diseases. Like cancer does it with kids. But I, my sister, I want to say she has dementia. She didn't have dementia, but cancer really messed with her spine and brain. And there's a part where, you know, on her deathbed, there's a part where you just see, like, the eyes. It's absolutely terrifying when you realize the life is out of their eyes. And you can tell that the memory is just gone. Luckily, I had 10 minutes where I think her neurons or electrons or protons in her brain, if you want to call it, connected and recognized me because I wasn't there for the longest time. Of course, you know, had to go, you know, it's time. And it was a good 10 minutes of just staring in the eyes. But then you realize it slowly fades away. And it's just haunting and it's terrifying. And this is one of those things where, when I see this dimension, like family members really trying, it, it's it, it's heartbreaking. There's a really good scene in this with Michael Keaton as well as James Marsden at the very end, where I was like, I was close to shedding a tear. I was very close. It was very solid acting overall by James Marsden. I think he's the one that really steals the show as well as Michael Keaton. They do a fantastic job with this movie. Uh, like I said, just a plastic story. It's not stylized. It doesn't need to be stylized. There are different elements of when the dementia kind of kicks in and what Michael Keaton does with the editing. And I think it's really good where it's like, really, it goes from like three-fourths to full screen and like, you know, jaggy lines. You're like, okay, I like how he did it because it was very different overall because sometimes it's foggy, sometimes it's sporadic, and sometimes like, oh shit. And there was a good storyline with a prostitute that, you know, tries a... I'm not going to... Actually, I'm not going to say that's a spoiler. Don't say it, Chase bad don't spoil the movie but like i said with this movie some negatives so you can say there's some pacing issues of you're trying to figure out where the story is going and they add some things that really don't make sense like how would he know this cop's father or other things like that where it's just sprinkled in there but you're just like what does this actually do to enhance the story or needing it to be in the movie and it really doesn't say that. Wow, I've tried to hold back something, and that is my fault. So that's going to sound really awkward. But yes, there are some things in this movie that just don't connect. And you're just like, why put that in the movie if there's not really a string to attach? It's more of a a whimper. And that was some of the stuff in this movie. But overall, Knox goes away. It's a solid movie. 
and I'm glad I never heard of it. I'm glad I never saw a trailer. I went in blind, and I really enjoyed what was on the screen. So Knox Goes Away will receive a 4 out of 5 of food taunts, which equals at 80%. So overall, a pretty solid Sunday coming to movies. So let's see what the Critics News scores gave this one. Critics, a 53% with 53 of them. Ha! Audience score 83% with fewer than 50 critic consensus. Michael Keaton directs Michael Keaton and Knox goes away and gets a terrific performance out of himself. A bet one that left stranded by an underwhelming screenplay. Who wrote this? Uh, Gregory Ponier. And he also did... Okay, so he... Sound of Thunder. So he's, is you know, not the most greatest screenplays. But I think it's a solid overall movie for what you're going to get. So 80, 83, 53. Chase Scott here with the Blue Futon. Like, comment, subscribe. But don't think it's Blue Tontopia. You Blue Tonians, thank you for watching. Have a great day. And I'll get to watch this tomorrow, week from a month or a year from now. I'm going to freak one of you. Enjoy life. And if you are if you do have a family, with, family member with dementia, I truly, truly am sorry. And just and be with them. Just be with them.